Hi Racers, welcome back to Interesting Maneuvers. Today we're going to uh, discuss the Jumpmaster 5000. Um, probably the best named ship. The thus first far. and only ship named after a 90s band. <laughs> <laughs> or inspired by a 90s band. I just want to know what the Jumpmaster 499 looked like. It was not as big. <laughs> Slightly smaller, less of a turret. <laughs> Yeah, this is a really interesting ship. Um, the asymmetric dial is kind of hard to get used to. Um, it turns left really well. Hmm? Yeah, it's definitely yeah. not as not as asymmetric as I feared. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was thinking there was going to be a lot of reds and a lot of whites. and that Def did not Definitely happen. reminiscent of NASCAR drivers. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to give my uh, Tal Tavara some, some corporate sponsorship. <laughs> Brought to you by Eminem. <laughs> well, and that would actually fit with the fluff of the the ship too. So you know, yeah, yeah, you're just meddling. Pa apparently, NASCAR exists in space. A long well, time obviously ago, obviously, it's pod racing. <laughs> oh, this is pod racing. You know, this ship is amazing. I love it. Uh, first turreted big ship for scum. They needed it. Really huge. Um, I love the love the pilots. Dengar is just ridiculous. I'm trying to find a solid build for him yet. But, I think uh, Dengar. Paired with Gonk and the new R five P eight, um, <laughs> can be pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I think all of them are are very good. I think it's also fun to like try and figure out whether or not you need to put the title on things, because that's a big decision you have to make with all of the named ones. I think, um, I think obviously you're never gonna put it on the contract scout, but I, I think it's worth it's, I did. think it's worth its points. Yeah. That that extra attack die. Especially with the turret is yeah. huge, um, but yeah, no, I, I think Dengar is really solid, especially with the the uh, counter attack droid. Um, Manaru is really interesting as a support ship. I think she's fantastic as a support ship because she has the potential. Because of all the upgrades you can put on them, it's possible for the Jumpmasters to to function without actions better yes. than you might think it would. Yep. So you can use your action to. To, to generate what you what the other ships in the fleet might need so Manaro can then like transfer it off. The fact that Manaro does not need to be at a certain distance yeah. is yeah. huge. It's, and then it's scum Uncle Uncle Wrinkly. Aunt Wrinkly. <laughs> oh <laughs> that's just wrong. Um <laughs> what? Scum Wrinkly. Oh, <laughs> it's very good. Yeah. It's crinkly. And and now you've seen the toll of this year's uh, store championship season and our, <laughs> our sanity. We say dumb things a lot. Uh yeah. So I know uh, Tel Tel Tavara is just fantastic. Um that's that was my first go to with, with this ship. Uh, pairing with hull upgrade um, effectively doubles the use of hull upgrade uh, with the the trigger of dealing out the four cards. It leaves you with two hull, which is survivable enough, coupled with gonk and salvaged agromech, astromech. The yeah, the one with you can pitch a you can pitch it to discard a, a ship trait crit. Uh, really, really survivable. Big fan, big fan. I like the ship a lot. I, I, I love I, the title. Yeah, I really want to. I really want to mess around with Dengar and his double tap. Um, maybe expose could be interesting. Ooh, that seems risky. It does, but but it could have a good payoff. I like the Dengar is pilot scum line. I like that the second yeah. pilot scum line scum is a big ship um, with a turret. Yeah, with a turret. Although Dengar really wants to be able to see you with his primary arc. And yeah, his which is which is interesting. I think Dengar can be a little bit of a trap though, because he needs his. Second shot needs to be inside of arc, and I, I mean you can get into a lot of bad situations there, especially if you're used to flying the, the turreted ships. Yeah. yeah, I mean you have to play them a little bit. Trickier. At the same time, the dial is a little wonky when you consider like greens, but it's very open. Just overall, if, if you can manage to keep stress off of that, you're doing it right. Yeah, um, I think. I think deployment against um, a stress spot is going to be really important. You don't want to play the left side of the board uh, yeah. because you can only go forward if you want to take actions. So I think that's that's something that I, I personally am going to have to come to terms with. I like playing the left side of the board. That's that's where my asteroid placement gravi gravitates me towards, and I have to break that cycle. But I think it's a really strong ship, and... 
Just on a whole, I think this expansion has a lot of really cool cards. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm particularly interested in trying out uh, the U-Boat, which is the contract scout with missiles, yep. like torpedoes. Um, I really want to see if, I mean, combined with the, the sort of extra action shenanigans that Scum can do, plus guidance chips, you could have a pretty awesome, you know, couple of attacks. And then after that, Sure, you only have two dice, but that's enough to plank for a while, and you're a nine-hole big ship with a pretty good dial. Yeah, and, and a two-die turret isn't isn't as, isn't isn't as bad as I think a lot of people feel. Uh, K wings are fine with two die turrets. The base outrider is fine with a two-die turret. I've seen a lot of successful builds just not taking title and throwing a mangler in the front. The fact that dorsal is even an upgrade. The fact that dorsal exists. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's I think that's going to be strong. Um, and we've already mentioned Gonk a little bit. Gonk is, is so good, fantastic. I think I think every scum ship with a crew slot <coughs> can successfully use Gonk. I mean, even even on a Polab Hawk, I think Polab's ability to re to remove those tokens and still be able to regenerate shields is going to keep him alive a lot longer than he has in the past. I do, th I do think that that's that's the worst of all of the choices. But yeah, I mean, it, I think it's it's workable. I think I think the fire spray wants to use its crew for offense and its actions for offense. At the same time, I mean, a regenerating fire spray could be. I mean, like a re regenerating cath garlic could be. Oh yeah, yeah. In in the end game, keeping cath alive for a turn or two could be big. Yeah. And then same thing for Bosk, like. Oh, Bosk, Bosk is really love annoying. that guy. I I think any of the the VC. Or uh, YV six sixes are gonna love Gonk just and, and they have the crew slots to support it, and and the YV is so cheap. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is an aggressively cheap ship. Yeah, and uh, I think I think it's just this this particular release just came with so many excellent like upgrade cards. Boba Fett, I think is fantastic. Uh, Uncle Wrinkly's everywhere. Cower and terror. Uh, TLT's cower and terror. Poe Dameron cowers in terror. I, I I think it's it's less let's go to them. Dash I think Dash is the one I think really Dash like, Dash really is very annoyed. Yeah. Um. I think, like, a lot of uh, even a fat hand. A fat hand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the big taking, ships. A, taking off a gunner or marksmanship or PTL PTL or three PO. Yeah, that's big. Or the same thing for decimators. Yep. You can lose a lot of upgrades that make yeah, them real no, sad. Boba Fett's a strong upgrade, um, especially with enough ways now to generate critical hits yeah. in the game. Mangler Cannon, um, Greedo, Greedo <coughs> Marksmanship. Um, unfortunately, you can't combo with some of the cool stuff you can do with the Imperials, but... Or the Rebels. Or the Rebels. Ezra. Ezra, Ezra. Ezra Boba would be funny. Yeah. Um, Dengar, I think, is an interesting crew upgrade as well. It um, it focuses more on the aces, and I like that a lot. Because it gives uh, it gives Bosk Predator without having to waste his EPT on Predator, which is which is cool. huge. And it also is a basically a passive K four, so it really opens up Bosk's dial. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it opens up Lots Razi's dial, so he can still target Lactis' ability Two. and benefit offensively. It uh, yeah, I think I think any. I think it's it's gonna probably replace K four in the single big ship because <coughs> um, I think I, I think a passive target lock's better than an active one. Yeah, yeah, and especially in the early turns when you may not be able to establish that if you yep. move beforehand. Yep. And we get a really cool Atami mind link. I think that's a really that, really cool. Yeah. I think that's gonna be that that might edge out crack shot in my robots list. Being able to K turn. And still focus evade on both ships is going to be huge. Uh, play wise, I think you're going to have to think about what maneuvers you're going to do a little bit more and, and which one to activate first. But very easy to. Well, you can only focus with both ships because you don't get the evades. Yeah, but if but in the turn you need to break away and yeah. you're using C, C will have evade focus. Yeah. Or double focus. Because well, whoa. Maybe yeah, depending yeah. on. So if, so if you move B first, focus, C gets it, C moves, and then boosts. 
or I guess it doesn't matter if you're using C in general. The one that's boosting away yeah. will have target or will have a focus evade. Or in the case um, with robots, uh, you activate the first one's going to do a sloop. The other guy gets a stress, does a green maneuver because they have like nine of those on their dial. Removes the stress, takes a focus. Now you have two guys with focus. Yeah. And you're using fire control because it you need to almost need to on robots. I think it just opens up. <clears throat> I think it opens up the things you can do with dual aggressors like you can build yep. them differently now and still have a lot of security you're yes. still working together mm -hmm. i think you can do that with two of the other ept like possessing generic ships yep um like the like the mist hunter two of two can Finesmen, or two black sun aces or like even two ten sorry point veterans or four of them could be really funny yep and yeah, I think as long as you're playing carefully, as long as you're thinking about your maneuvers, I think you're going to get a lot of oh, benefit yeah. out of it. Um, especially, or uh, any, I think any ship uh, like Polob or Manaru that can trick assignment of focus tokens outside of the normal action step, like or, Polob with a tiny mind link, yeah. could give you three or four... Or the Leech Focus and tokens. Uh, Z95. Or, or, or Nachos Leechos, or Nachos Leechos, or whatever his name is. Pulling a focus off of your buddy and then putting that focus right back on him. Yeah. It's it's a... And there's no range limit, too. So it's it's a cheap PTL. You, you run into a little bit of a, an issue against Stress Bot. Uh, fortunately, you can only stack one Stress Token on the ships that are mind-linked. So, taking two stress from a, a stress bot's not going to make your yeah, other guys all have a pile of stress. So, and yeah. that's going to happen at a point where you can then like make decisions based on that information. It's yeah. not going to happen before a ship mm -hmm. has moved yet. Yeah, which could be huge, yeah. really bad for mm -hmm. them. But and and I think it combines other ships. Like, what about Cavill? Cavill's EPT has always been sort of like a very conflicted spot. You don't really know what to put on him. You put a tiny mind like on him. He's never doing red maneuvers and has an easy way of doing green stuff. Yep. So he can just go forward, do the green stuff, and then oh no, he did a green, like someone did a red maneuver. He gets the stress. He does not care. Yeah. He's gonna unhinged three something and be fine. Yep. I think it's then a he, really cool upgrade. Yeah. And uh, since it's an assign in that situation, you're probably gonna have guys moving before cable. They take the focus, give him a focus. He moves. Takes a focus. He has double focus for his his TLT shot. Yeah. So yeah, no. A tiny mind link is is going to be interesting. It's going to be cool. I can't wait to use it in some lists. Same thing with rage. Yeah. I, I've I have been in love with rage since it first hit the spoiler list. There's so much dumb stuff I want to do with rage. I want to throw it on Kane Farlander. Maybe with Kane and Jarus in the back seat. Obviously hanging Tycho. out. Obviously Tycho Selchu. Um, more importantly, youngster from the Gazanti. I, I want to run the I want to run the Rage Swarm with uh, I think it's Zeta Leader, the one that beginning yeah, of the combat phase removes stress, uh, stress from everyone within range one. Just fly forward. I think that's Zeta Ace. Zeta Ace. I, yeah. I think Zeta Leader is the one who can take the stress to okay. get the extra dice. No, it's it's, it's one of the Tie FO pilots. They they all have the same yeah. names, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's going to be huge. Because um, I for for a while I really liked the exposed youngster build, but I think Rage is going to edge it out. Yeah, and you could you could run up to five uh, A wings with uh, Rage and Wingman, so they're clearing the stress fairly easily. And I think that's a pretty good list because you ran five with Predator and declared it to be amazing. And I think the Predator one's a little bit better because it I lets you K turn and stuff. I, I, they might both be good. I don't know. Well, we well, can experiment. You get, you get with the it. focus. You get. Up to three dice, so no matter what range you're at, you're re-rolling all of your dice, yeah. regardless of who you are shooting at. With the wingman, you aren't suffering terrible effects. You can rage every single turn, and you do not have to rage. Oh, yeah. In, you know, so you can, on certain turns, prepare yeah, we'll, to K-turn. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see it. We'll, we'll see how that pans out. Like I said, I think... I personally think Predator edges that out a little bit, because it is passive. So you can still evade and gain the benefit from it, or you can boost and gain the benefit from it. But I think it's I think it's I think it's an interesting call. I'd be interested to fly against it. So build it up. We'll get that on a bet rep. It'll be good oh, yeah. times. Oh yeah, much good times. What do you think about the overclock Darfur? 
Oh, that's the one where you, you spend a focus. You spend a focus, you can receive a stress token and sign another focus token to your ship. Could be interesting, uh, especially with a tiny mind link. Yeah. It's a out of sequence focus, which is huge. Yeah. Especially because you can fire with something before the guy with the astromech, use that focus on the attack, spend the focus, grab a stress. Put focuses back on all your dudes. Yeah. Is that once per phase? Uh, during, during the combat, combat phase. When so. you spend a focus token, you may receive one stress token to assign one focus token to your ship. So there's no... So there's no limit. limit. To do it. So there's no limit. Well, okay. it's, it, it's a once per. Yes, but let's say you have a cable. Mm-hmm. Who spends it, gets it back, spends it, I don't it, gets think it back. That's, I don't think that's how that works. I'm not sure, though, but I think... I keep, like, I think the FAQ said that if it doesn't specifically say that it can work multiple times, it's a once of. But that's, I mean... I think it's once per triggering instance in the FAQ, not once per round. Well, I mean, still... Still something to, to look to into. Look yeah, but yeah, yeah I, think, I think having a tiny mind link with that, you're attacked, you spend your focus on the defense, you get your focus back. One point is pretty solid, and then you give focus to the rest of your guys. Yeah, it, it could be interesting. I think I think I think there's a lot of play with those upgrades. Gonk's insane. Yeah. Um, R5P8. R5P8. Yeah. What else like is R5P8? Just being able to do damage Out when you get shot at. Yeah. Yeah. Is especially on ships that have a lot of hull or shield, and like mm -hmm. I was talking about earlier, pairing it with Gonk. Yeah. On this particular ship. The one ship that can take an R2 R well, and, a, and, a, yes. and a crew. Right. That's another interesting thing. It's the first time we've seen this. Um, I sincerely hope this never comes to Rebels, because I think there's a lot of really dumb oh, yeah. Rebel crew and a lot of really dumb Rebel Astromechs. Yeah. Um, what, what else, what else is in this expansion C3 that we haven't PO talked crew. about yet? Right. I think that's everything. Guidance ship's in here. We already covered that. Yeah. Uh, feedback array, which has been out which forever. Yeah. For Oh, I think that's it. An influential but not like overwhelming expansion. Yeah, really solid ship. I yeah. like it a lot. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, be sure to check out the channel for all of our other uh, videos on the new wave release. Also, uh, hit up all of our battle reports. Check out those builds that we're using. Uh, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to like this video. We'll get some more X-wing videos out there for you. Thanks for watching. I forget what we're calling this thing. Interesting, Interesting maneuvers. maneuvers.